who wouldn't want to camp here, right? I'm Aaron with Arctic Campers. We're out here camping this weekend in the beautiful Rocky Mountains of Alberta, Canada, and thought I'd take the time now to give you an overview of our 2024 Arctic Campers G12. So there it is right there. And so why don't we start off with the running gear and construction of our trailer. Starting off with the tires. We have 33 inch all-terrain tires mounted on 17 inch rims. The rims actually have a six by five and a half bolt pattern, which is the same as Toyota. So if you're running a Forerunner or a Toyota Tacoma, um, you can get a set of matching wheels if you wish to do so. Just behind the wheels are 6,000 pound electric brakes, which are mounted to Timbrin's 5200 HD axle of suspension. Trailer tows uh, pretty amazingly um, with that suspension on here and quite steady. So we're pretty proud of that. Just behind the tires and actually on all four corners, we have ARC uh, corner stabilizers. In this case, we have the optional upgrades, which is the ARC EXO corner steady. Um, these actually allow you to lift the trailer and change a tire if you uh, were put in a position to do so. Um, so those are actually uh, quite a nice unit. Moving around to the front, we have our tongue. And the reason I wanted to film this is actually to showcase our hot dip galvanized chassis. So we're one of the few manufacturers um, in North America that have a hot dip galvanized steel chassis. And why this is important is that galvanizing process is uh, basically rust proof. So this allows for like up to a 75 year uh, rust proof uh, lifespan of the chassis versus some of the manufacturers that might use like a powder coating or industrial coating on their chassis, which is susceptible to, let's say like a rock chip and which will then start the rusting process and we all know how that will end. Um, on our chassis, pretty standard stuff, seven pin uh, connector, emergency breakaway switch. We have safety cables. And in our case, we opted for the max coupler articulating or 360 degree articulating coupler. And up on top here, we have a bike receiver uh, tube. So if you had a bike rack, you can actually mount the bike rack on top of here and you can fit two bikes horizontally uh, pretty comfortably. If you're a family with uh, maybe one or two children, uh, one of the vertical bike racks where the bikes are mounted vertically will fit as well. On the other side of the tongue, we have an ARC XO750 tongue jack. The 750 meaning a, a tongue weight rating of 750 kilograms, which is approximately 1600 pounds. And of course with our tongue, it's 400 pounds. So that's uh, quite the margin and the tongue jack actually these little double wheels with tread on it even so that's kind of cool um, for 2024 we have upgraded our electrical system to red arc and why that's important in this case up here at the tongue is that we now provide a anderson plug at the front tread plate here as standard so one could modify the tow vehicle have the anderson plug uh, on the tow vehicle connected by the provided six foot pigtail and you can charge the trailer batteries from the tow vehicle up to 30 amps, which is pretty incredible. With respect to our construction, our trailer is, as usual, made with inch and a half thick uh, composite sandwich panels. The sidewalls and roof are in R7 insulation value, while the floor is a thicker two inch version of that, uh, which gives you an R9 insulation value. So you can combine that with our optional insulated canvas, which we have here, and which is uh, stitched up with 3M Finsulate giving an R4 insulation value on the canvas. So it's uh, quite toasty warm along with the furnace, of course, in those winter months. All of the exterior is a textured powder coating on our custom aluminum uh, trim, along with the aluminum tread plate on the front here. And you'll see here all these rivets were kind of neat. These are waterproof rivets. So you can see the tips there are all ground down uh, to seal the rivets up. And there's a little rubber bushing behind there. Um, prevent any water from making its way into the interior. All of the trim here is actually bonded to the fiberglass panels with a uh, structural adhesive. Uh, it's actually a sealant adhesive, so it's pretty flexible, so things can twist and move as you move down the road. And uh, um, the bond is actually incredibly strong on there, so we're pretty happy about that. Another new feature for 2024 is our trailers now actually come with this uh, rain gutter, we call it. So up top with this awning, being gapped away the way it is, um, which is a necessity with the roof coming down. This will prevent water from coming down between the awning and the wall. So while you're cooking in the kitchen here, um, it allows to keep a little more dry and less water from trickling down the wall. We have a little feature up top there with our mountains, uh, which we thought was kind of fun. 
And so there's uh, generally the construction of the trailer and running gear. So why don't we move along to the storage? We have, as some of you might know, we have quite a lot of storage. We have 105 cubic feet of storage in our trailer, 80 of which is accessible from the exterior. So the first of which is our integrated tongue box. So that's six foot deep, up top seven feet actually. And so some of our customers actually get a set of skis in there while they're waiting at the ski hill and a motion light up there to give you a little lighting. Right, let's move around to the other side. So starting in this corner, we have our uh, strap points for the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning that we have here. So little ratchet ropes are provided. There's another one at the back for the uh, backside of the awning. So that's just a nice little feature to point out versus uh, a D-ring we used to have before. So for 2023, we had a D-ring um, that was kind of flapping around, making noise. I didn't really like it. Um, the, the anodized color on there would fade in the sun. So now we have our own uh, little design that's power coated and quite a lot more uh, sturdy than the previous model. Up in this front uh, left corner, we have our propane tank cabinet. So this is a 30 pound bottle for reference or scale. Of course, a 20 pound bottle will fit in there without issue. The next compartment, we have our forge sto forward storage. Uh, I like to keep my tow related gear up there or hand tools. We have portable toilet. In this case, this is the wrap on electric toilet. This is an optional upgrade for us. I have another video posted that you can uh, watch about that toilet, but normally a Thetford porta potty would be coming as standard with the trailers. And the reason we have positioned it there, of course, not only is it usable from underneath the bench, which we'll show you in a little bit, but the toilet can actually be pulled through and lifted up here and brought around and put inside the shower enclosure in the back there. So it gives you that option to use it either inside or outside. While we're on this side of the trailer, we can show you the shore power plug. So this is a 15 amp shore power plug. So you can just use a normal extension cable you would have uh, at your home. Uh, that charges by 30 amps, by the way. And then we have an SAE solar port. So plugging in a portable solar panel that you might have already, uh, put it on the sun to charge, and it'll just automatically charge because the trailers come standard with an MPPT solar charge controller. Something of note is, like in this case, we have 400 watts of solar on this particular trailer. And so if you were to now plug in uh, portable solar here, you would be able to combine the um, wattage or amperage of the uh, solar panels together, which is kind of nice. Here we have our fill port for a fresh water tank. Uh, again, it's a 37 gallon or 141 liter fresh water tank. And then that is plumbed into our Truma Combi here, uh, which is a combination furnace and hot water tank. As you can see on the front, we have some um, valves and PEX lines uh, going on. And that's just because we provide our water system uh, fully winter ready. So these are a winterization system. So you turn the valves, which will redirect the antifreeze you put into the system to divert past the Truma because you don't necessarily want antifreeze inside the Truma here. So again, that's our furnace and hot water tank. That is the intake and exhaust for the Truma Combi. And just above it is our very large storage garage in this rear left corner. This, by the way, if anyone's wondering, that is our inverter. This is where we mount our inverters with a little shield on the side to protect it. Those are the optional awning walls for the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning. This cabinet is pretty substantial. It's about five and a half feet all the way to the back there. and um, Man, you can fit like four sets of lawn chairs in here, plus tote bins, plus a barbecue. Um, there's a lot of space. We'll do another video soon to show how much uh, we or I store in this area. So there is the uh, left side of the trailer. Coming around the back, we have our Overland Vehicle Systems shower cubicle. So that drops down. It's a, a four foot by four foot curtain system that drops it down to give you privacy while utilizing the shower here. So this is the outdoor, outdoor shower port. Of course, we give you the quick connect uh, shower head and hose that goes in here. So you have hot and cold water here. And just above is a porch light. So this porch light has a toggle switch on it. So we can actually switch between an amber light and a white light, depending on what your setting is. Maybe you want to avoid uh, some insects, in which case you would leave it on the amber setting. Here's the other mount point I was referencing before for the, uh, the rearward anchor point for the, the awning system. And so this is actually uh, riveted through, along with the spare tire carrier, which I'll get to in a second, 
a set of aluminum tubes that we have uh, embedded in the walls for not only structure, but areas where we can mount these critical, uh, critical items. So this is our new spare tire carrier for 2024. We've actually been able to save about 30 pounds by redesigning this. Always uh, trying to be mindful of weight savings on our trailer when and where we can without compromising um, the integrity of things. And of course, mounted on there is a full size spare tire. As you can see, we are standing underneath the Overland Vehicle Systems uh, 270 degree awning. It is providing quite a lot of real estate uh, underneath and a lot of shade or even uh, coverage from any weather if you use the optional uh, zip-in wall system. So their walls actually come down on an angle, which is quite nice. So you can imagine the, the footprint that it's going to give back here is pretty big. Um, one of the options that we like to do is put a portable fire pit down here uh, with some uh, lawn chairs around it, allowing us to still fully utilize our kitchen and be covered in here um, in any uh, uh, inclement weather, as I said. So coming around to what we call the business end of the trailer, when we designed it, uh, it was really important that we had a uh, effective uh, cooking area. This is primarily driven by the fact that we are uh, one of the only manufacturers, there are a couple, but we're one of the few with a pantry uh, accessible from the exterior of the trailer and definitely the one with the largest. This is a 12 cubic foot pantry. Uh, as you can see, my arm going all the way in is to my bicep. Um, it's quite a lot of space. And so of course, just putting cups and plates and dry goods, um, pots and pans and the like in here. As usual on the right side, we have a couple of electrical ports. There's dual USBs on this side and then a 12 volt cigarette lighter on the other half and 110 volt receptacle there if you opt for the optional inverter or if you're plugged into shore power um, because the, the, the inverter comes with a transfer switch. So that would just uh, activate um, when you're plugged into shore power. So just below, we have our pull-up kitchen. So this is an aluminum powder-coated kitchen with an HDPE plastic countertop, a very similar material that you would have as a uh, cutting board in your kitchen at home. So we have a dual burner stove with a windscreen system, a drying rack or a dish rack, whatever you want to call it, that folds up, gives you an extra space to put maybe a roll of paper towel. We have our faucet and hot and cold water, all of course uh, housed in our drag chain, chain system. So that protects the gas line, electrical line, and the hot and cold water lines as the kitchen moves in and out so it doesn't get snagged up in the drawer slide or, or caught on anything else. The reason I say electrical line is because our stove is actually hardwired in, so no need to change batteries uh, for the ignition of the stove when you fire it up. Just below, we have push to open drawers, two of them. As you can see, it's uh, quite a lot of space in there. And this is the spice drawer. Tons of space. Um, we prefer to design out a drawer system versus having just cubbies with bungee nets on the front. Um, obviously a much more professional look and it allows for easier access to your materials in there. On the right is a cubby for, well, you can see a scrub brush, soap. Here's a bungee cord so you can hang tea towels for drying your hands. To the right is a fold down prep deck. This gives you just extra countertop space. And just above is another one of those porch lights that can switch between white and amber. Rounding off the kitchen is our 12 volt fridge freezer. That's on another drawer slide. So this is a 75 liter, 79 quart, 12 volt fridge freezer. So you can switch the zones as you see fit. You can fridge, freezer, freezer, fridge, whatever you like, um, including a little bottle opener on the bottom there and the clasp here for opening the door. So you can have the door open and attach while you have your uh, fridge out. And a little bit platform here for uh, storing items as you bring your food out, you can put it down there, of course. So that rounds out our exterior kitchen. It makes a nice U-shaped cooking area all uh, covered underneath the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning. And there you have it. So why don't we take some next steps here and head on into the interior. Let's just get this door clasped into place so it doesn't bang around while we're doing this, this video. So first up, let's just get the lights turned on. We have a whole video on the Red Arc Red Vision system that's new for 2024. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. 
but for now we'll just get the lights turned on so as you can see as 2023 we have our powder coated aluminum uh, cabinets throughout along with uh, the stylite product uh, that is a marine grade mdf with a pvc uh, laminate that's all bonded with a polyurethane adhesive so it's like mechanically sealed um, from any moisture uh, given that it's also a marine grade mdf so um, we've had this tested in a very steamy environment and no warpage whatsoever. So we're, we're sticking with that product for now, um, just because it's so robust. So turning to the front, we have four large upper cabinets. Plenty of storage in there uh, for all your clothing items. We got these two foot long drawers. Three of them, of course. The six foot four long bench by 30 inches wide. So underneath here we have the uh, portable toilet, which we'll get to in a second. The electrical cabinet, which we'll also get to in a second. And a single seat over here, uh, which provides a little extra storage. So underneath here, we have that bit of storage. And then just to the right, we have a wardrobe. And a boot cubby just below so that's a good place to store your shoes or your boots or your hiking boots or anything like like that sitting in front of here is the lagoon table so this can be set up so if two people or three people want to sit and have a meal you can position this in whatever way you like putting this out of the way we can get into the two uh, lids on the bench here so we have our electrical cabinet over here we have a whole video on the Redux system um, and what's going on in here and another youtube video so we'll get into too much detail about that. And we have then the access to the portable toilet cabinet. So once you open up the door, that allows you to actually take a seat right there so you don't have to move the toilet. Um, as I said previously, this is a wrap-on electric toilet. Um, like once again, we have another video on that one. And so I won't get into too much detail about it, but normally there's a fetch for porta potty that sits there and gives you access to having a, a toilet inside your trailer, maybe for evening use or, or something like that. All right, moving on to the windows in the trailer. So we have uh, three windows in the trailer, plus of course the window for the entry door here, which is not openable. But each of the canvas windows here um, have, of course, shade covers on here, but also zip open uh, little plastic windows that you can open up to create quite the breeze uh, through the interior space here. But the main window is a double acrylic pane uh, window with a bug screen coming down from the top and a blackout blind coming up from the bottom which the two of them then connect with a magnet in between. The four latches to open up the window and it creates uh, quite the opening here. You can actually like position it in any position you want uh, with those little toggles on the side, kind of like hiking pole toggles to uh, hold, the open, hold, the, hold the window open um, as you see fit. Further ventilation can be provided from the Max Air roof fan. Uh, that is a top of the line unit, uh, 10 speed, dual direction, rain shield, all that fun stuff uh, in that uh, in that rooftop vent, which also comes with a remote that we mount right there for you. As far as the sleeping arrangements go, uh, that is a residential 60 inch by 80 inch queen mattress. And this trailer actually sleeps for uh, people pretty comfortably, two adults, two children, really comfortably. So of course, two adults up there, but this single seat here actually connects with the bench. This bench uh, is six foot four long, and this is actually six foot 10 this way. And so we have actually little filler bars that go in here, which we have in another video uh, that allow you to take the dinette table, place it down there. We provide like a filler panel that goes in the remaining space. And of course, two cushions uh, to create a big L shape sleeping arrangement. On the far side of the bed, we have a cubby that runs the width of the trailer. There's actually a dual USB ports over there and a furnace vent uh, on the other side. So if someone wanted to actually throw their blanket over top while the furnace is operating to keep warm under the blanket, um, you can obviously go ahead and do that. The furnace is a, uh, as I said earlier, a Truma Combi, all controlled by this panel here. And um, yeah, I mean, you basically operate the furnace or the hot water tank independently from one another, which is a, a nice little feature. To the right, we have USB ports. More USB ports up here, plus a cigarette lighter port, and of course another 110 volt receptacle uh, 
uh, at the top here if you opt in for that optional inverter package. Some little updates uh, for our trailer. Our roof lifting system has actually been improved a little bit. Um, we've made some engineering changes to it so that it makes the roof a lot uh, easier to open and close, especially for those of you that opt for rooftop solar or air conditioning um, because you got a large amount of weight on top of the roof. So we needed to change things up so it, it continued to remain easy to lift and lower the roof. LED lighting uh, throughout the trailer, as you can see here. And of course, um, staying up top here with the roof, we, uh, well, this is the insulated canvas. Um, so we have our bows stitched in here, as you've seen in another um, roof lifting and lowering video that allows for when you, when you lower the roof, all the canvas to fold in nicely so you don't have to deal with any bungee cords or having to go around and stuffing in the canvas um, as you close the roof for the end of your camp trip. So as with the 2023 model, the interior standing room from the floor to the ceiling is six foot eight, six foot ten across. Um, we get a lot of comments that the interior is a lot larger than it makes out in the video, so something to keep in mind um, when watching this. So as usual, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us, admin at arctocampus.com, or of course on social media, at Arctocampus. Have a great day.